Is it? It's lead foil, all right. Hey, we really lucked out this time. Get it? assuming that we can find some kind of radioactive power source. Forget about them. We have more important things to do. And there's a reward out for little people. The government will pay good money for them. Since I was a little kid, those things have always somehow gotten to me. You know what I mean? flashlight this one isn't bright enough <laughs> do i ever get the easy jobs 
Fitz, you took it when he and Barry went out to the outpost. Well, that means it should be back in about 15 minutes. You mean 15 minutes? Fitz, you hitches enough for another two hours. <laughs> you forget, Skipper. It's close to supper time. When the calories call, Fitzhugh and his watch always run fast. Come along. Sir, our outpost hitch did go by very fast. And do you think we ought to call in first? Make sure your watch is right? Nonsense, boy. My watch is set at Greenwich Mean Time, and my stomach is set at New York Meal Time. Both are synchronized and never make a mistake. Let's go. and we came running. What happened? Well, it seems that these muggers were after this man's wallet. After they got it, he got up and ran. I'm sure the poor guy was scared to death. I made sure they didn't see us, Mr. Fitzhugh. You're a good boy, Barry. Captain, I... Consider this forward area is much too dangerous. Could very well be, but we need to operate the outpost. And take a chance that the same thing might happen? This monstrous world is obviously too dangerous. This hunk of machinery may be that source of power we've been looking for, Captain. And the radium on the hands and the arrow marks? That's right. That's pretty low-grade stuff, isn't it? Yeah, but it might still be usable if I can modify the secondary system. You mean this giant timepiece might help us to escape? Well, no ironclad promises, but it's worth a try. We'll need all of the radium and some of the metal parts for repairs. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's drag it back to the ship. Hold on, Barry. That radium may be harmless to the giants, but it could be radioactive and very dangerous to us. Okay. We should be able to move it. I'll push him under here. Behind. Ready? Let's go. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. All together. Uh, you ready? One, two, three, go. <laughs> It's no use, Captain. It's lodged between the rocks. Can't we smash away part of that rock out, Captain? Not without the right tools. Well, we've got to do something, Captain. We will, Baron. If you'll agree to let me tear some lead propulsion couplers out of the engine. Hmm. It's a risk. All right, you handle the salvage operation. I'll contact Dan and Betty back at this ship. We're gonna need some equipment. Right. Barry, you help the captain. Yes. Since you go back to the ship, Dan will need a hand. Mr. Wilson, I'm still convalescing. Betty's there to help him. You can load all the tools on the cart and bring him here. Tools are not all we'll need. We're transporting the radium from here to the ship in those lead couplers I asked for. They must weigh at least 200 pounds of piece. Dan will need some help. What about me, boss man? You go with him. See, he doesn't lose his way. 
check. You heard the man. Now, see here, young lady, I... Mush! Just a moment. <laughs> no, Fitz, you're not again. Come on, Dan needs our help now. And you young people are so importunate. Look, you want to cripple me for life? Put your shoe back on. I'll check. Wait, I'm coming. Watch it. It's an animal trap. You don't think I will be taken in by anything as obvious as that wire? <laughs> You. I think it's this way. No, no, this way. Follow me. It's going to be the last load. Well, that's a stop. Stop. There's more than half the radium still left. I know, but it's too dangerous to work in the daylight. We'll have to finish the night. And what if the owner of this clock comes back to look for it? All we can do is cover it up and hope that he does. Look, you put me in charge of this salvage job. I didn't tell you to risk the group's security. Getting off this planet's worth the risk. I vote we finish the job right now. I'm going to ask you for a vote. I know how you feel, Mr. Wilson. We all feel the same way. But we can't work all night and all day, too. Even if we had the strength, we can't risk being caught. Would you want that to happen? Oh, you're right. They didn't build Rome in a day, so how can we expect to dismantle a king-sized alarm clock in one night? Let's find something covered up. Better bring the car back if you can. trick with room and spare. Mm -hmm. 
Those fellas have scoop nets, and you can bet they didn't come to scoop butterflies. Well, at least we're safe. <laughs> For the moment. Your definition of safe leaves a great deal to be desired, Mr. Erickson. Take a look at that. It looks like some kind of sound detector. It's crude, but it's probably very effective. Make a run for it. Run? Any particular direction you'd like to suggest, Bitsy? We're not running anywhere. Mark thinks that he can use a clock in the radium to get the ship operating again. We're gonna give him his chance. Camouflage to build those monstrous streets won't be able to see it, will they? They don't have to see it. They have a sound detector and that clock is still ticking. <laughs> We stop that clock from ticking. If you're thinking about breaking into that case, forget it. It's at least an inch thick. Now he's right. There's got to be another way. What about wedging up the dial face and poking a stick inside to jam the mechanism? No, I need that dial face to make repairs. It's the only thin piece of sheet metal on the clock. Yeah. Well, maybe the spring will just run down. That's it. The lad has made a brilliant deduction. We merely relax and let the clock unwind itself. Are you willing to gamble that the clock will stop before they get that sound detector turned on? What else can we do? 
Chipper! Come here, boy. Oh, here, boy. Get the little bag off me. It's ruining my apparel. Sorry, Mr. Fitzy. You must have found a mud hole somewhere. You're a bad dog, Chipper. No, Barry, you're wrong. Chipper's a very good dog. He's just giving me an idea on how we can stop that clock from ticking. See how hard this mud turned when it dried? It might work. What might work? If we can pry the hands off that clock and pour a bucket of mud down in the center hole, it'll dry rock hard and clog up the mechanism. You must be insane. Force feeding mud into a monstrous clock. But even if the idea were practical, which it is not, where'd you get all that mud? From the same place Chipper got it. We're going to give it a try. You, Dan, and I will handle the clock. The three of us should be able to pry the hands off. Meanwhile, Betty and I will dig up a nice gooey batch of mud. Right. What about me and Mr. Fitzhugh? We're going to need you to guard the cart, Barry. Naturally, you want someone to watch a little boy. Natural. We'll meet you at the clock. Come on, Chipper, dear. Show Aunt Valerie where you played in the mud. Be careful. Where do you go? What kind of bother me? Well, the way everybody else went out on a dangerous mission, and we didn't. On the contrary, by remaining here, you and I are serving all humankind. We are? Absolutely. It is imperative that there be some survivors of our group turn to Earth one day and render a report of this, this outlandish place. And who better to perform such a service than you, the youngest, and I, Yes, indeed, boy. It's our duty to survive for mankind. Yes, sir. I just hope mankind will be proud of us after we've done it. One more to go. The girls should have been here by now. Don't worry, they'll make it. Sounds like some kind of 60 cycle hum. Yeah. But where's it coming from? The sound detector. Just a little more. If we can get this off, maybe I can jam a stick down through the opening. Forget it. Run.
Well, we have some radium anyway. Not enough. Not nearly enough. There's nothing we can do about it now. But what about the girls? You know, that giant could turn that detector on again any minute. We better find them fast. Dan, you and Mark try this way. I'll send Fitzhugh and the boy back to the ship for safety, then I'll check around the outpost. <laughs> chickened out too soon. Whatever it was, I'm glad it went away. Come on. Chipper, what's wrong? back to camp. We were on a flight to London when... What is Los Angeles? Tell him it's just a state of mind that it doesn't really exist. This isn't a joke, Valerie. It will be much better if you cooperate. We have others of your species now under observation. Well, good. Tell them hello for us. Did you hear that? We're not the only ones caught in this wild number. Shh. We are interested in the technical progress of your species. Are you scientists? We're not talking unless you let us out of here. Sorry, don't make him angry. How did you come here? What is your source of power? I told you we're not talking. No. Got to make it sound like, like George Washington. Catch? Catch. Describe your transportation vehicle and its location. It's a spaceship called a magnetically supercharged skateboard. I'm sorry, we can't show you where it is, sir. It crashed. 
and we had to bail out. What others came with you? Others? There are no others. We came alone. Isn't that right? Absolutely. It was an all-girl expedition. We are searching for others. Don't waste your time, sir. You've got the entire group right here, just the two of us. Now, if there's something you'd like to know about Los Angeles or London... Your examination will continue later. Sorry if I was too flip, Betty. It's just a cover-up. Actually, I'm scared out of my mind. Well, if it'll make you feel any better. So am I. Well, what are we waiting for? It's not that easy. The women are in a glass jar. And he can bet they'll be kept inside the tent, right where the giants sleep. What are we going to do? We're going to have to trick the giants into leaving the tent. Long enough for us to get to that jar. Some kind of diversion. I've got it. We'll not only get them out of the tent, we'll get them out of the area as well. Blow up the sound detector. Wow. Preposterous. While the giants are outside investigating the explosion, we'll be inside helping the girls escape. Yeah, without their sound detector, they'll give up and go back to the city. I like the idea, but uh, what about explosives? We've got them. One of the ship's hydrogen fuel cells could be electrically detonated to make a nuclear blast. A small one, but big enough to flatten that sound detector for good. Mr. Wilson, we are critically short on power already. You take a hydrogen cell, and we're really in trouble. Precisely. We can't afford to waste one precious ounce of fuel. Would it be a waste if we can save Valerie and Betty, Mr. Fitzhugh? Well, that's... Uh... That's beside the point. We are five of us still free and capable of escaping. If two are lost, it must be considered a regrettable sacrifice. Simple, humane logic, boy. You have a nice, warm way of putting it, Fitzhugh. Mr. Fitzhugh's right. We risk using a fuel cell, there's a chance, and a good chance that none of us will ever escape from here. I suggest we settle this by a democratic process. Call for a vote that each of us decide whether or not we are cheerfully willing to sacrifice ourselves and our companions in a scheme surely destined for failure. That sounds fair. I guess. Yeah, why not, Steve? All right. Majority rules. We risk using a fuel cell in an effort to rescue the girls. I vote no. Reluctantly, of course. I vote. 
yes. Then. Yes. Larry. He'll vote with me. No. That makes it two and two. He'll vote for himself. A good lad. Remember our duty to all mankind. I vote. Yes. But, but you can't do that. He already has. And I'll add my yes to the tally. If you're outvoted, that's you. We take the fuel cell. Fools! Don't count on me for help. I won't be part of any of this madness. <laughs> Still very functional. How long will it take you to set that charge? About 30 minutes. Okay. Meanwhile, Dan and I will scout the tent, try to find out what the situation is. You know, it's going to be a tough climb trying to lug that heavy fuel cell up there. Yeah, well, you two just make it to the tent and be ready to move fast when the fireworks go on. Let's synchronize. Everything has to be right on the dot. We're in trouble. You mean worse trouble? It'll be 4.30 in five seconds. Four, three, two, one, set. Okay, we have exactly 30 minutes from now. Five o'clock. Check. Good luck. We'll save it for the ladies. My job's a snack. some way to apologize for what for not voting with you apologies a little late you made your decision i made mine but you don't look very happy with your decision ridiculous i'm perfectly happy with it and why are you walking back and forth like you're worried because i am worried those idiots out there are trying to get themselves killed I'm forced to remain here, playing the magnificent coward. But who's forcing you? It's not who. It's what. Principle is forcing me to remain here. Behind the lines, immobile. Surely you know what principle is, after all the lectures we've had on the subject. Mm, yes, sir. I guess so. You guess so? Explain principle to me in the present situation. Proceed. Explain it. Principle. In the present situation, sir, is we should save our own necks at any cost and let Valerie and Betty go hang. Barbarous. 
absolutely barbarous. What does that mean, sir? Barbarous? It means I don't know what's happening to our young people today. It also means I'm going to retire. Good night. <laughs> If he flashes that light on that sound detector, that's it.
watch making out. So do I. It's 4.50. We've got 10 minutes before the explosion's supposed to go off. Yeah. If it goes off. by himself without being spied upon? It's all right if you didn't want me to know about how you really felt. About helping them, I mean. I understand, Mr. Fitzhugh. Nonsense. I was merely taking a walk. Is there a law against it? No, sir. But if you're only taking a walk, it would have been a lot safer walking the other way. Oh, keep quiet. Stay close beside me. <laughs> legs twisted and this detonation wire is not only caught under this cable, it's snagged under a rock. Where? Over there. Don't worry. Mr. Pitcher's come down. <clears throat> Of that big speech of yours, Fitzhugh. The one about every man for himself. It's been replaced by another big speech, Mr. Wilson. To it, I'm taking over this job personally. <laughs> Kindly shut up! <laughs> Barry, I'll be taken back to the tree route. Yes, sir.
fits you, you old bag of wind. Show him you're still a man you'll be reckoned with. <laughs> You might as well put that battery down and forget about it. He's not going to be able to hook up that wire anyway. Yes, he will. I know he will. It's almost time. They're probably trapped in that tent, and there's nothing I can do about it. Relax, old boy. Fitzhugh will arrest you. You made it, Mr. Fitzhugh. You made it. Of course I made it. You think I wouldn't? Still very painful. Not very. It wasn't Barry who had the doubts, Fitzhugh. Yes. I presume that much. Move that battery over here. There's supposed to be an explosion outside any second. What's the matter, Fitzhugh? You can't go through with it, can you? What are you mumbling about? That other wire. You gonna connect it? There's just a few seconds left, Fitzhugh. You either destroy that fuel cell or the girls. Or which is it going to be? What's that? Can't a man of privacy? Mr. Alexander Fitzhugh, on behalf of the crew and passengers of Flight 612, temporarily detained to London, it is my very great pleasure to extend to you this token of our esteem for your... Uh, gallantry and your courage. Gallantry and courage above and beyond the call of duty. 
Besides, it'll cover that dirty spot. I don't know what to say. Hero? Is that really for, for me? It sure is. With my personal thanks. I'll second that. <laughs> <laughs> me too. <laughs> I am proud, Mr. Fitzhugh. You know, about that talk we had about surviving and all. This is indeed an honor. Thank you. Yes. Thank you very much. Of course, I will admit there have been a few anxious moments when success seemed elusive. But that indomitable Fitzhugh spirit prevailed somehow, didn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Yes, indeed. Survival. That is the essential element. We'll find another source of fuel, Captain Burton. Don't you worry. I always thought there was hope for our situation. That's very encouraging, Fitzy. Thank you.